Hello everyone and welcome back to the Where Am I podcast, episode 7, the podcast where we travel the world virtually because we cannot do so physically. Now I just wanted to start this uh, video with a very quick um, update. Uh, my initial plan was to sort of do an almost an episode every day, uh, that's just not been possible at the moment. Um, so I've decided I will set a schedule which I'll try and keep to over the week with new episodes on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I've uh, just got a lot of other stuff going on at the moment with uh, my master's dissertation and with various sort of volunteering projects that I'm working with at the moment and uh, this just gives me a little bit of time when I'm not doing stuff to relax. So I just want to get that very quickly out of the way. Now, in episode, uh, in the previous episode, in episode six, uh, we were at Gobekli Tepe, or the world's oldest temple. And in that episode, I gave you some clues for where I am today, along with two pictures this time over the weekend uh, that I drew of where I was. So those clues um, were... Uh, the site I'm at today could be described as Britain's Pompeii. It has some of the best preserved Bronze Age dwellings and was destroyed during a catastrophic uh, fire during the Bronze Age. So, did you manage to guess where I am today? Well done if you did. I'll just give you a couple of moments, uh, just like always. Uh, if you are hearing these clues for the first time or haven't seen the picture posts. Of course, you could just pause the video. And there we go. And yes, I was at Must Farm near Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. Now, Must Farm for me, I think, must be just like... Uh, a couple of episodes ago, we were looking at Sutton Hoo, which was one of the most sort of important British archaeological discoveries uh, of the 20th century. I think Must Farm must be certainly up there with some of the most important uh, British archaeological discoveries of the uh, 21st century, although the site was first discovered back in 1999. Um, but the sort of full importance of the site wasn't really realised until a little bit later. So, what is Must Farm and why is it so important? Of course, all sites are important, but why is Must Farm important? Well, Must Farm is a Bronze Age occupation uh, site at the Must Farm quarry uh, near Peterborough in Cambridge and sits within the Flag Fen Basin, actually only around about two kilometres or 1.2 miles from the site of Flag Fen itself. And it's important because, just like I said in the clues uh, for this episode, it has been described as Britain's Pompeii. Um, that is because, along with the other clue, it was destroyed in a catastrophic fire and has given us some of the best preserved Bronze Age dwellings ever found. So you should be able to see my um, very... Uh, amateur artwork of what Must Farm may have in fact looked like, along with a, uh, a more accurate depiction in the form of a simplified excavation plan of the site. So in brief, Must Farm was a series of Bronze Age uh, huts or dwellings which were built on stilts over a river, with the river running underneath and surrounded by a palisade and walkway. Um, the site was only around six to 12 months old, actually, when it uh, burnt down. And the level of sort of preservation is so good, you can actually still see the remains of some of the meals that were found in some of the houses. Um, again, you should be able to see my very uh, amateur 
uh, depiction of one of the houses are on the screen. So the houses were of a sort of wattle and daubed panel-like construction, uh, construction uh, as were the floors, which would have given it a sort of very springy um, feel to it. The and the roofs were made out of thatch, turf, and clay. Hopefully that is uh, <laughs> visible in uh, my very very bad picture. So as I said, you know, the fire which uh, sort of swept through the settlement very quickly was so sudden that it actually left remnants of meals and working floors of activities that were still going on in these houses at uh, the time of the site's destruction. And again on the screen in the moment should actually be a professional's depiction of what the houses actually looked like. And again these must farm, as I said, it, it provided, you know, a good indication of what Bronze Age life was like, and the fire also preserved things that would not normally uh, be preserved if the house had just sort of decayed or was buried um, in, in normal conditions. Um, the fact that a large quantity of almost complete uh, Pots and cooking ware were found, cookware, storage jars, um, eating vessels, uh, quite a lot of wooden artefacts that would not normally survive uh, were also found, boxes, uh, wheels and, and other similar objects and indeed fabric and what and the fabric was in such good uh, condition that they're actually able to identify that it in fact came from plant fibers rather than animal fibers um, and and this is actually this is actually the largest sort of collection of bronze age textiles from this site that we currently have available uh, available to study uh, the site also yielded the largest uh, collections of domestic metalwork from Britain, including axes, sickles, gouges, razors, metalwork, um, and other metalwork. Metalwork from the Bronze Age is rarely found in association with the actual settlement, um, so it's quite valuable to have these artefacts within this sort of domestic settings sort of still where they were potentially being used in the houses for everyday activities. Uh, we often find a lot of bronze artifacts often richly deposited in watery contexts or found in hoards. Um, but during the actual excavations at the site, actually, an earlier feature on the site was found, which was a raised wooden walkway, very similar to what was found at the site of Flag Fen. Um, the timbers from this walkway were dated between 1290 to 1250 BC, and the causeway is uh, made up of, sort of really big oak uprights many of which have sort of have handles sort of shaped into the sides of the actual um, of, of the pillars. And there was, again, as, as mentioned, metalwork which was deposited alongside this wooden walkway, which included swords, spears, um, which is a practice which is well known in the Bronze Age, such, so, such as at Flagfen and, and other sites uh, around the country. Um, so again, on the screens, you should be able to see some of the sort of preserved timbers of the houses and uh, and the walkway. In fact, in the image you should be able to currently see, you can see the, the uprights which are sticking out of the ground are the ones which would have uh, been submerged by the water and protected from the fire. And the burnt timbers in the sort of bottom and bottom left are the sort of burnt timbers from the construction of the houses and of the upper walkways. So how do we know about Must Farm? Well, 
things have been found in the area around Mast Farm really going back as 1960s and the 1970s. But the sort of first knowledge of what we were actually dealing with at, um, at the site really comes uh, back to uh, 1999, um, which was sort of the earliest uh, recognition of some of the posts which were found. This led to sort of preliminary evaluations and excavations between 2004 and 2006, but these only really started to scratch the surface of the site, although it was during those excavations that, we, that the archaeologists started to identify how important this site was, the sort of what, what kind of uh, site they were dealing with here. But it wasn't really until 2015 and 2016 um, when the uh, University of Cambridge's uh, archaeological unit began to dig that the extent of the site and, and, re and really the, the, the level of preservation was um, truly identified. Um, and again, the, the excavations ran from uh, the summer of August 2015 to 2016 uh, to completely uncover an area of around about uh, 1,100 square metres or 1,300 square yards. And I very much, I think, remember seeing this both advertised in The Guardian and I think... It was either in Cont Archaeology or British Archaeology. It may have been both. I probably had both of the magazines. I've still got them, but unfortunately they're not here with me at the moment where I'm currently staying uh, during this period. But I can remember seeing those pictures, such as the ones I've, I, I put up on the screen, and I was just completely blown away by what I was seeing. The level of preservation of this site was so immense and so beyond what really we had before and me being a, a, bronze, a neolithic and bronze age person was just it was such a fantastic site and things are still being found out through the sort of post excavation stuff and stuff is still going on and it's really exciting to see what's going on um must farm have its own dedicated website which again i will link down in the description which has some fantastic pictures of some of the artifacts and um the woods and, and the preserved textiles and the preserved tectiles, tecti textiles, textiles, it's a very difficult word for me to say today, are just an amazing um, quality to see. Uh, the fact that, you know, they were preserved initially by being charred by a fire and then being dropped straight and then sort of being extinguished by the water and then covered over. Um, that's why they are so well preserved. But again, that was a very brief uh, view of Must Farm. Um, and again, there's much more better information out there than I can describe to you in this video. So again, I'll put more links down in the description about Must Farm. Um, and I believe a lot of the finds are in the Peterborough Museum. So again, if you want to go, if you want to go and find out more, go when you can, when the museums reopen to Peterborough. I certainly will be making a trip myself to go and have a look at some of the finds there. But again, that is going to bring us to the end of our look at uh, Must Farm. Right, and that just brings us nicely on to uh, the clues for where I'll be on Wednesday. So today we are at what has been described as Britain's Pompeii on Wednesday, I'll be at what has been described as the Scottish Pompeii. It is a Neolithic stone built village in Orkney. And those are all the clues you're going to get from me regarding that. Again, free clues. I always like giving free clues. First clue, Scottish Pompeii. Second clue, Neolithic stone built village. Third clue, or Orkney, although arguably those are actually all just one clue really, but I'll divide it into three. So, hope you enjoyed today's video on Must Farm. Uh, do join me again on Wednesday where we will be exploring the Scottish Pompeii. Do you know where I am? Can you guess? 
do comment down below if you can guess or comment on Facebook or whatever you want to do again I'll give some picture clues uh, tomorrow uh, using my very dodgy art skills to where that might be as well so again I hope you enjoyed this video if you have please do uh, hit the like button share with friends family or if you have not liked it then share it with your enemies uh, and do hit the subscribe button and notification bell to find out when the next episode is up. Thank you again for watching and take care.